Well, firstly, like Claire, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone for everything that 5050 Parliament is. Uh, the first time I met Frances, uh, she was basically running around PCH with bags and t-shirts with this on. Uh, I was an early accosted, so I was accosted early by, by Frances, and I think every single one of us who has been in that position, has treasured the relationship we've had with 5050. It truly is cross-party, it's about women, and it's about the men who support women to yeah. be their very best. So thank you very much. And thank you to Lloyd. I was just reminiscing as well uh, about when, when I came in in 2015, uh, there wasn't an all-party women in parliament, all-party group. It was the first time we had the, uh, the Select Committee for Women and Equalities. Just drink that in. 2015 was the first time we had the Women and Equalities Select Committee. So the first time we could actually examine you know, what matters to not far off 52% of the population uh, and, of course, those people who need our voices. And that's what you are as a Member of Parliament. You are the voice for the voiceless. You are the person that people can find in the community. And most importantly, MP stands for most persistent, which generally is exactly what women are. So thank you so much to 5050 Parliament. And it's a real testament to uh, us getting back, having this new King's speech. And of course, there's 5050 in the diary. So that's really, really important. A big congratulations to, to new colleagues in the room. I can see Alison, who's my near neighbour. Welcome, Alison. Congratulations. And, and others who have been elected or indeed want to be on the it's such a privilege to have a past that gets you in that building to speak up on everything that matters to you, your community, your family. And actually, it really helps the men to speak up on what's going on in their community, their lives, their homes, their constituencies and do it with confidence, whether it is around mesh or endometriosis or sexual health, all of those things. Every single MP in Parliament who happens to be male is talking about those things locally in the constituency with confidence. And it is incredible whether it's an adjournment debate or Westminster Hall. And I've had people who, when I joined Parliament, said, do you know what? I felt comfortable chatting about that with my family or in the constituency, but I didn't really know how to bring it to Parliament. So having more women's voices, helping men to bring more women's issues together and that understanding really, really matters. And women, and we talked about, and this is cross party, but we, as you might have noticed, need more conservative women again. Yes. So <laughs> Twice as late. I know we're back on a mission, Claire and, and Francis, and anyone with conservative values, but of course, freedom, aspiration, opportunity are things that women are always fighting for. And guess what? We need to connect that with conservative values because yeah. that's exactly what they are. And we also need to shout as women about our successes. Um, the work that we've done around menopause, um, Claire's mentioned childcare, it's completely changed the landscape since 2010. And going forward, it needs to continue to be that when it comes to women's opportunities. And actually, working at the DWP, I found too many single parents, I'm a single parent, very often uh, those carers are women, don't take up that childcare, don't see that progression, and don't see that opportunity. So you need to see people of all parties, all backgrounds, talking about all experience. And the fact that we've had more women in Parliament with the domestic abuse bill, domestic abuse is criminality in the home. So we need to call it what it is, we need to tackle it, and we need to work with our young boys and men and work with the learned behaviours and the challenges that we've got. So the work that we've had uh, in my time at DWP on trauma-informed approach is really important so that whenever you come into contact with government, you can speak up. And it really matters to business. So many women are so brilliant at startups, but it's access to cash, it's network and other things that holds women back. So some of the work that I've done around the Lilac Review on disabled entrepreneurship is really important. If you see anything on that, please get involved. And also on autism, very often women's uh, diagnosis 
on SEND or autism is too low. But actually, quite often, those kind of uh, individual businesses, flexible opportunities will make a massive difference. Now, women who've been elected, I'm the 380th woman elected to Parliament. We have now finally got 693 women over the line. Woohoo! Well done, 50 50. And the point on that so you think when you're in this queue for swearing in, it doesn't really matter. It does, it's your number. So, any of you who wants to get there next time, get in the queue early because it gets you further up the, the ladder. And it's so important that we are tackling the issues around gender pay gap, flexible working, and there are 2.4 million more women in work since 2010. And good news, the more women in parliament means more women work as well. But this needs to be all across the, the uh, country. And this is about growing Britain. We know it's a more insecure, challenging world since we've had the pandemic and we know uh, what is going on across the globe. It's difficult to stand up for what you believe in, but not if you believe it wholeheartedly. So as women, we believe we are doing the right thing for everybody and it's very often issues based that brings us here. So believe in those issues, champion those issues, use your voices and always make sure that you are true to yourself. Don't ever let threats, intimidation or anything else censor you. Stand up for what you believe in and have that fight. And then however long you're in Parliament, and believe me, we've worked out, it can sometimes be short. So uh, well, well, welcome to my leadership launch, everybody. Um, so <laughs> um, you bring the PIMS, I'll be the MIMS. And, uh, <laughs> We'll see where this leading goes. But, but seriously, um, we need women in all areas where it comes to, to business or indeed in politics, uh, in every part of our community. I loved being a local councillor, being a local councillor, police and crime commissioner. All of these jobs are really important and have a direct impact on your community. So thank you for what you're doing. Keep doing it and keep pushing and give us some help on the Conservative benches. <laughs> Thank you.